Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Side Hustle Club podcast. So before we dive into the super packed conversation that we have planned for today, I want to first share something that's really, really exciting that is coming to our clients uh, inside our coaching programs in October 2022. So I'm really excited to introduce a new live mini course for our private clients. And tentatively, the name is going to be called the Podcast Club. So what this is, is that it's going to be four weeks of workshops where I'll be breaking down how podcasting has really amplified my own business results. And we'll also be doing live coaching and Q&A where the clients can ask me anything related to content and marketing in my podcast. So I actually looked into some numbers uh, in, t- in my own podcast and I found some really cool stats. So between March 2021 to February 2022, so in that one year timeline, we actually created over 110K USD in sales while having only like only quote unquote, like 10,712 total downloads on the show. And that's not a very big number, to be quite honest, that that's actually a pretty small audience size for a podcast. And that's really important to know because almost all of our clients in our coaching programs during that period of time have actually said that they were a casual or regular listener of our show. So that means that our podcast likely added value to them and played a part of their decision making when they were deciding whether to work with us inside the coaching program. So I may know a thing or two about creating a podcast that creates results for your business, right? So anyway, so this mini course is going to be where we are going to deep dive into how the podcast has created over six figures in our business, uh, my views on podcast content strategy, lessons and mistakes, and what I would do differently if I were to start over. And we're also going to do these really fun things. So it's like, it's like, I, I want to call them like a hot seat content creation session where like, we're going to choose several students or clients and like basically hot seat coach them. And in that session, we're going to hash out one draft more or less that they can then like polish up or record later on and like publish. So um, basically like my intention here is to show that you are very capable of creating long form evergreen content that can serve um, as value for your audience for months and months to come, right? Even if you feel like right now you don't have time for a, for to start a podcast, or even if right now you're like, I don't know why I even talk about on my show. I really want to break through those limiting beliefs and show that you are very capable of starting something right now. So if this mini course sounds fun and you want to join in on the fun, and also take your content marketing and business to the next level, then I'm really excited to share that we do have one-to-one coaching uh, spots currently open. So uh, this is for you who might want to build your coaching business while being able to make time for the other parts of your life that matter most to you. So if you're keen on joining us, please head on over to CherylTheory.com slash program and send in your application. And I'm really excited to see you on the inside and on our mini course workshops. So yeah, um, With that being said, let's transition over for the conversation for today. So I want to like start off today's top uh, podcast episode by saying that the title of this episode or like the topic of it might like seem fluffy on the surface, but we're going to go really, really deep. And it also will be including like a number of practical insights that you could really look into to help you stay grounded, stay focused and keep taking even more like higher quality and higher energy action in your business. So the way I want to start off this conversation for today is I want to ask the question, why are you building your business? Right. And and I, I want to first start off by prefacing the conversation by saying that you get to define your reasons for starting and building your business. Like, please do not let anyone, including myself, sway you from your own genuine reasons for starting a business. But that's exactly the thing I want to explore, which is what are your reasons and are those your reasons? Or are they reasons that maybe you picked up from from people around you or from social conditioning around you? So that's really a big core theme of today's conversation. And the inspiration for this topic really stemmed from how I was recently reflecting on my own journey in my business. And I thought about how in the first five months of my business back in 20, 2019, it felt hard. Like, yes, I signed clients. Like, yes, I created results in the first within the first month of starting my business. And I'm also able to like reverse engineer what worked, what didn't work. But like, this period of time, it really felt 
just really hard. So for a quick backstory, I started the business in March 2019 and I hustled hard all the way from March till August 2019. And then by August, I basically just like crash and burn. Like I literally like burned down my business for the next seven months. Like I shut everything down. (laughs) So I actually shared this on previous episodes. So uh, please feel free to like scroll back um, and check out the relevant past episodes that might interest you. But anyway, so like when I was thinking about my business burnout back in 2019, I suddenly thought of a new concept, which I would like to call feeling like an average high achiever. So the way I would define an average high achiever is feeling like you're good at what you do, but you're not the best. And as a result, the recognition that you get is just just kind of so-so, right? And you feel like people do know that you're good at what you do, but like that's about it. The credit and recognition always goes to those people who are like ahead of you or better than you on whatever scale that they're measuring it on, right? And hence, they're always the people that you're comparing yourself to. And I think for many of us, in the context of our business, feeling like we're not good enough is, it's so prevalent, right? And I think it's really especially prevalent for those of us who have the drive and we have the work ethic. And we also identify as someone who is high achieving and capable of creating big things. But because we're we're always feeling like we're not as good as like other coaches or other entrepreneurs, right? Like maybe because they're more established or they're making way more money than you, or they're they're just more well-known in their space and they're like speakers and authors now, we feel like we have to compensate by working really, really hard and by doing more and more and more and by doing better and better and better so that we can also be recognized for the value that we we bring to the industry. And then that's how we can become an in-demand, in-demand coach or entrepreneur, right? And so when I was like contemplating on this idea, I went like way back in time and I thought about how like, this pattern, how it would show up in my past lived experiences. And the most prominent memory that came to my mind uh, for myself was my younger days in school and like also all the way up until high school. So basically like I always felt like I was a good student and I got good grades, but I was usually just like second best at best, right? Like back in primary school, I actually studied at a local Hong Kong school for grade one and grade two. And back then the teacher would like literally like read out the results of the top scorers report cards. So I remember in like grade one and grade two, the teacher would announce the results and they would say, so-and-so got six A's this semester and Cheryl got four A's. And like, I always remember I was like the second person to be announced. I was always the second best in the class. And like, keep in mind, I was like seven years old, right? So from a young age, I always felt like, yeah, like I'm not bad, but I'm not the best. Right. And and that carried over to high school. So in my freshman and sophomore years, like I wasn't bad at all in terms of my grades. Like I always got pretty good grades, but like at those award ceremonies every year where they would like celebrate the top scores of like the subjects in class. And they would like announce who got the overall like highest grade of the whole entire cohort. It wasn't me. Right. And I remember back then I felt like I felt jealous in comparisons. Yes. But at the same time, I also felt like I had to do better. Like I have to study more. I have to clock in more hours to study the next school year. Why? Because I wanted to be acknowledged for my efforts. Right. And so in junior and also in senior year of high school, that's exactly what I did. Like I studied my ass off. And when those award ceremonies came around again that year, This time, it was me who got that top GPA whatever award, right? And you know what was really fascinating? When I graduated high school, even though I hit my goal, I felt really empty. Like, it it was really odd to me at the time. Like, I felt, I remember I felt really just depressed around graduation time because I felt like, yeah, like, I hit this major milestone. I, I, I made this goal happen. Like I got recognition for it, but I just felt really empty, right? And in hindsight, like I can understand exactly why that was the case, right? I think for many of us, we chase these goals and metrics of success that honestly, it wasn't even our goal or how we would define success. And because we would hustle and grind our way to like achieve some other person's definition of success or what a successful career or life or business looks like, it makes sense why when we do hit certain milestones, it doesn't make us feel any better about ourselves or how we feel about our life because 
we haven't spent any time like doing what matters to us. Like we we don't even like we, we don't even know what goals matter to us. And as a result, we haven't made the time to go after what actually matters for us personally. Right. And I saw this exact pattern come up for me years even beyond high school, right? And later on in my business, especially in the first year of my business. So, um, and I think now when I like look back, it's it's so funny because like you would think by like years later, I would have enough data to like not repeat that behavioral pattern anymore where like I would just go after big goals that honestly I did it really blindly or because I thought like that was a standard that I was supposed to strive towards to look good to others. But like, because my self-awareness muscle up until like when I first started my business, it was still like, it was still in developmental stages, let's be honest. The pattern did happen again in my business. So for the rest of this episode, let's shift focus to, to how all of this relates to our business and how we show up in the business. And afterwards, we'll talk about how to ground back to your own reasons for doing what you do and let that drive results in your business moving forward. All right. So when I think of my first few months of being an entrepreneur and coach, I remember feeling like I was just an average slash baby coach compared to everyone else I saw on Instagram. Like there were already so many established coaches with large audiences, beautiful branding and brand photo shoots. And many of them were really successful already. Right. And so I thought like, who am I to call myself a coach? Like who am I to teach people about like confidence and content and personal branding, which is by the way, like what I was positioning myself as back then before I I pivoted more to business coaching. But anyway, so because I was like navigating so much self-doubt and comparisons during the first five months of my business between that first like five or so months. So between March and August, 2019, I really believed that I had to work my utmost hardest to make it as a coach. Like I really believed I had to do like 20 different things at the same time and go for quantity because I thought that that is what's going to help me create success, just like how it did back in school. Right. And I thought that if I just kept doing those things and do more of it, then surely I'll be practicing my skills at the same time. So I'm hitting both quantity and quality, right? So that's what I tried to do. And so basically like for a quick recap of what I did back then. So on top of my full-time job as a research assistant, I also worked with my one-to-one clients. I post on Instagram stories every day, posted several times on my Instagram feed every week. I had my private Facebook group where I would do like weekly monthly challenges and like Facebook live streams inside that Facebook group, sent out uh, like weekly email newsletters every week. I was in other people's Facebook groups. I posted on LinkedIn. I started a podcast and I even did a few YouTube videos, right? And that was a lot of work, especially for a side hustler. And if there's one thing I learned from those five months in 2019, it is that doing more quantity of things is not an absolute guarantee to success in your business, especially like the correlation between the number of things I did for my business and the number or, or like the number of hours I clocked in, like it is not a direct guarantee or reflection of my results because like and the reason I say this is because like when I compare 2019 to 2021 and 2021 is basically when I was still a side hustler and I created our first six figure year in the business. Like, let's just say that we created way more results in 2021 and we worked less number of hours per week in 2021. Right. So, and, and instead, like now I focus way more on like the quality slash energy of the things that we do so that we can like do more or less of the same quantity and frequency of things and hence like have more of like a regular working schedule for the business every week and do it in a way that feels manageable, right? But also another big thing that happened in 2019 was burnout, right? So like the fact that I got to a point back in 2019 where the business no longer felt worth it, like it no longer felt worth continuing anymore, despite those results, like I mean, like, I think, it was like 22K in that first five months of my business. Like that's not bad for a brand new coach, right? But it just no longer was worth it because it had such a toll. Like the way I was operating my business had such a toll, my mental health, my physical health, my relationship with my, my, my loved ones, my focus at work and so on. It was no longer worth it anymore. And that's why 
I know that back then I was not building a sustainable business and I was not setting myself up for a successful business in the long run. So lessons learned. But back then I really believed that I was doing like the right, like I really just thought that I had to do more and I wasn't even doing enough and I, I wasn't good enough, period, right? And those beliefs really stem from my identity back then as a so-called average high achiever, right? Like I knew I could work hard, but because I felt like I wasn't the best, then I felt like I had to work even harder and push myself even more in order to be recognized for what I was doing. And then that in the end led to my burnout, right? So for anyone who can relate to this so far, if you're currently in a position where the thought of like, I need to do X, Y, and Z in order to sign a client If this comes up for you very frequently and strongly for you, one thing I want to offer for today is, okay, so it's like, sure, maybe, okay, so you could do X, Y, and Z, but to what extent do you need to do X, Y, and Z, right? Because I think we also like often just like jump to like extremes and we think like we need to go from zero to a hundred, but is that even necessary or is that even in line with the season of life that you're in? Because for example, as much as I would love to be on even more platforms, like I would love to start like a weekly email newsletter. And I would also love to have a blog for the podcast and like repurpose our content for like LinkedIn and TikTok and whatever. Like, even though like I know exactly how to do those things, I understand my own capacity and I intentionally choose to focus my time and energy on my personal life and like existing clients, right? So that's why right now, like as of recording this, so today is September 10th, 2022. Like my main priorities in my business is coaching our clients and continuing to work on our brand new curriculum and client portal for our clients, which is just like a huge project on its own. And also just like creating the usual podcast and Instagram content, right? And I, I understand I could look for like, support from a virtual assistant or a content repurposer, but like just speaking from the uh, perspective of a solopreneur, right? Like even though we hear so many coaches and marketers or like very successful people say like, yeah, like multiply your content and repurpose it for as many platforms as possible. Like I understand the value of that. Like it makes sense to do that. But right now, like I am happy with my own reasons behind the decisions I'm making and I don't have to maximize all opportunities right now. Like I don't have to go all in on all available resources or platforms right now. Like, yes, that is a long-term goal, but right now in the short term, in this season of life, I'm happy with my decisions and I'm happy to take it a bit slower so we can ramp it up in 2023. And trust me, I got some big plans for us in 2023. Anyways, so it's been over three years since I started my business. And since that seven month burnout, and my business has grown tremendously since then. But here's the interesting things. Like, even when things are like fine, and I'm signing clients consistently, I will still feel anxious about not doing it enough and thinking that my content or coaching for our clients isn't good enough in, in comparisons with other business coaches, right? Like it still happens. And I'm sure some of you listening right now, like you also experience thoughts of like, I'm not good enough and I'm not doing enough, right? And like maybe multiple areas of your life, right? And for myself, like in the context of my business, I still have to continue to work on unbinding those thoughts and feelings about judging my own potential or success or worth as a business owner and coach based on how much I was doing or how many hours I was clocking in. Like I still have to work on learning how to better manage my anxiety and the thoughts or actions that might fuel the anxiety, right? Because let's be honest, like this is an ongoing journey of self-development. And that's also why I think so much these days about how our clients can incorporate more thought work practices and just daily routines that will allow them to ground into that energy of like calm. Because When our brain is not spinning in 20 different directions at the same time, then it's much easier for us to be creative, to think about our clients and to market and sell from that state of mind and to coach our clients and so on. And only then can we really be the best entrepreneur or coach, like really be that best version of ourselves. But it all starts with 
just those different types of inner work, right? So that's why now for the clients inside our coaching program, we coach so much on their thoughts and, and like even daily routines on a day-to-day basis, because I've seen how creating just more calmness overall has consequently strengthened our clients' just overall ability to stay resilient and committed to their business, even during times where their, their results isn't what they're hoping for. Like having those mindset practices and like those physical well-being or like physical energy routines can really do wonders for your ability to show up and work on your business, right? Because your, your mindset, your energy, your life, like they matter, not just for you, but also your capacity to show up as a decision maker and action taker and creator of results in your business. And when I think back to some of our clients who have created like a lot of results inside our coaching program, and they're doing it quote unquote consistently, they are the clients who also make time for their overall well-being and energy levels. Like for example, one of our clients who created their first 5K months inside our programs, they also care a lot about their the foods that they're eating and how she's fueling her body. And another client comes to my mind. And so this client doubled or made back double their investment of her program as a career coach. She also actually hired a health coach to support her on her own health goals, right? And another client, like she's huge on having these like regular and consistent meditations and affirmations and thought work practices in her weekly life, right? And I'm so confident that for these clients, like it is these routines that have helped them sign clients, right? Like taking care of your mind and well-being, And like just how you feel on the daily, like it matters. And I think for these clients, like they are an exemplar of how like quote unquote working hard in your business may actually look different from what we would expect. Like these clients didn't technically clock in more hours on their business to grow and like get results, sign clients, but rather they are spending time working on themselves as people and they were able to have even more capacity and creativity to create even more results in their business because of that. So I really love how they were actually challenging the notion of what working hard is supposed to look like, right? And I also just want to add, it wasn't like these clients naturally wanted to not spend more time on their business, because let me tell you, (laughs) each of these clients I just referenced, like we had to coach them on not putting more time into the business, right? Like we actually had to coach each of these clients and just reference in terms of like not doing more manual labor for their business, right? Especially when we already had something that was working for them, like their Instagram content and marketing is already creating clients. Like instead we had to coach a lot on not correlating more hours spent on their keyboard with more income, like higher income months, but rather we had to focus our coaching on their sense of identity, their belief in their offer, their belief in their content and messaging, uh, and being open to like taking better care of themselves, right? All of that so that they can in turn create even more amazingness in their business. So again, your life and your overall well-being and how you feel about yourself, it matters, right? So with this in mind, I really want to invite all of us to think about the following question. What expectations do you have about who you're supposed to be as an entrepreneur? What your brand is supposed to look like or sound like or feel like? What characteristics you're supposed to showcase? Like what working schedule or strategy do you expect successful entrepreneurs to implement in their business? And then like ask yourself, like, are those expectations even true? Why or why not? Is there any expectation that you don't even want to adhere to for yourself and you would rather replace them with your own rule or definition of how you want to build a successful business, right? Because if you believe that only entrepreneurs with certain characteristics can be successful and you feel like you're lacking those things, then how can you be motivated to build your business? Like really, like if you feel like a successful coach who's like in demand and like magnetizing their clients if you feel like they look a certain way on social media and that's just not how you naturally are, then how do you expect to feel excited to show up online and talk about how you can help someone, right? Like how are those expectations supposed to help you feel excited, passionate, convicted, motivated, or just wanting to do anything for your business? Like really let that question sink in, right? And I really believe, and I really mean this, I really believe that each of us here are really capable of building a successful business because I really, really, really believe that we all have skills and ideas and lived experiences and stories that can help someone. And hence, 
I believe that each of us have something to add to our niche or industry. And as a result, we can create a business out of it, right? And I also believe that work ethic is not even a question. It's not even a question for any of us here. I know we're all very capable of putting in the work and working our butts off for what we believe in. So I'm not even questioning that, right? Like I'm not even thinking, oh, this person's lazy or they're not motivated, right? Like I have very high belief that if you're in my community, that's not even a question I need to ask you, but rather a question that I do think is worthwhile for all of us to explore is, What are you working hard for? What are your reasons for doing what you're doing? Why are you pursuing this business? Even through all the ups and downs that are innate within entrepreneurship, right? And the reason why I'm genuinely curious about this question is because one observation I've noticed is that when someone really has a clear reason for why they're doing what they do, their hard work feels different right? So for someone who has a clear reason for doing what they do, like their work ethic is like purpose driven and it's focused. Like it doesn't matter if their reason is to make money to support their family or if it's like focused on impact, like it literally doesn't matter, right? But if their main reason is one that means a lot to them, then their energy of their hard work, their actions and their thoughts about what they're doing, like it will all reflect that intention, right? That commitment just feels different. The energy just feels different. And Like, this is one of those things where I I do have more trouble articulating into words. I do think it's something that all of us should still consider, which is like, are you operating out of reasons that mean a lot to you? Or are you doing this business for reasons that you might have picked up from the influences or society around you, right? And maybe another thing that that I want to add here, and just another thing that I've observed from my own experience is that when I'm working hard and I'm working really hard on something that means a lot to me like I feel proud like I feel really proud of the progress I've made so far but whereas if I'm pursuing like like some sort of like standard or goal that I kind of just chose because like that's what people around me were like going after then like I constantly felt like I wasn't doing enough and I wasn't good enough compared to everyone else around me right so that could be a helpful way to explore your relationship with your business right now And a very, very relevant client example I can share here is basically any of our clients who struggle with content creation and marketing for their offer because like they've invested in other business or content strategy courses or even like other coaches. So like for for these clients, um, they they may have like invested in other containers that have like a very specific clear-cut method that they teach their students, right? And like, this is like the way to do content. Like this is the exact step-by-step framework to content and marketing and sales that work for me. And if you implement what I did, then you can save yourself like months of pains and heartache that I went through. So you don't have to repeat the same mistakes I made, right? Like that's the, the kind of the program that a lot of my clients have invested in before. But here's what often happens for our clients who didn't exactly resonate from those programs, resonate with those programs, right? Is that so? What happens is that they basically just start to hate content creation. Like a lot of clients actually come to my program saying, like Cheryl, like I want to sign clients, I want to help people, but I just don't know what content to create to get people to work with me. Like I don't know what works, I don't know what doesn't work. Like, and I just hate having to like create like myth busting content and like all of my content sounds so salesy because like that's what my past program told me that like I have to say these words right. And like, just basically a lot of my clients would first come to me feeling like they hate their business. And one thing I just want to say here is that if this is how you feel like, then staying consistent in terms of content creation or just in business in general, it's going to feel really hard, right? It's going to feel really hard if you don't even like the action that you're taking and you said you're going to do it every week, right? Like it makes sense why your content isn't working if you yourself don't even like what you're posting, right? It makes sense why you feel like you're burning out in your business because you're forcing yourself to do things and posting things that you're like, ew, right? And on top of it, it also makes sense why your ideal clients can sense that in your content, right? So like if you're wondering whether your content sounds salesy, right? And it's not how you would normally communicate to another person, then chances are other people are probably feeling the same thing. And that's why I teach our clients to develop their own unique thought leadership, 
inside our coaching programs, we coach a lot on our clients to like look inwards and like literally use their own brains to come up with what they want to be known for. And then we work together to come up with a plan on how to articulate exactly that to their ideal clients, right? So many of our clients who have created results from working together, like they would say that this is one of their biggest takeaways from our program. And it's a big contributor to how they were able to sign clients, even for those who literally just started their business from scratch before working with me, or even for those who like, they've been trying and trying and trying for months, but they just weren't seeing the results that they want. Right. And that's also why I developed the money making theory inside our curriculum. Right. And that's the framework based on the idea that your unique thought leadership, your ideas, opinions, thoughts, and like everything else inside your brain, like is not only of value to your ideal clients, but it can also make you money. Right. And it's a framework that currently guides how I plan my content, both for podcasts and for the Instagram. So Uh, those are my two primary platforms, by the way. And like, it's not based on what any other business coach or marketers advise. It's like, it's not the same structure where it's like, oh, you need this type of content or you need to say these things and use this particular language to convert your follower into client, but rather like the money making theory framework is really structured in that it gives you direction, but it's also flexible in that you get to adapt it to what you genuinely want to talk about and what you want to be known for, right? So I share all of that to say this one thing, which is when it comes to the specific parts of your business, like your content or marketing, or maybe just like, just how you even show up to your business. My hope is that we can all just be open to the idea that the value and impact of what you do is not based on how others perceive you or how many clients you've worked with, but your worth as an entrepreneur, coach and content creator, and even a human being, right? Like it isn't and should not be dependent on what other people think or how much money you've made. And I really believe this because the way I think about it is that if entrepreneurs opted to start a business and do unconventional things, then why would they subscribe to these conventional and basic AF metrics of success or like adhere to other people's boring AF definitions or expectations, right? Like shouldn't entrepreneurs not want to adhere to like, like, I think what I'm trying to say is like, wouldn't entrepreneurs not want their impact and value and worth be measured by like, like common expectations or standards of society? But like rather, like I think a lot of us started our business because we just want to help people, right? And like for some, like depending on the nature of the industry, like creating something really innovative is the goal. But for others, like the goal simply is just offering a solution to a particular problem. But either way, the end goal is to help people, right? So if anything, like I hope that you can just look at your business, like in terms of how committed you are to helping people, even if you are building your business to make money, which by the way, that's expected. Like you're supposed to be doing that. Like nothing wrong with that. But I also just want to urge you to consider how committed you are to helping people through your business in addition to the beautiful benefits that are attached to having a business, like more income, more flexibility, more career options, and so on. And how much you care about helping people, it has nothing to do with how much money you, you're making or what other people think of you or your, or what they think of your branded photos or like how clear your messaging is, right? And when I think back on my own journey, for myself, it was only after I got clear on why I do what I do was I able to then put down my defenses and like my need to like impress strangers on the internet in order to get them to work with me, right? Like only then could I really let my guard down. And for myself, the way I want to build and the way I want to scale my business is not through curating the best, most polished image of myself, but my personal preference for taking and scaling, like taking my business to the next level, scaling, whatever you want to call it. Like the way I want to do this is to be like able to let myself and the essence of who I am, my ideas and my thoughts and my experiences, like letting all of that be the reason why amazing clients choose to work with me. Because I know how not so great I felt for many years when I was trying to present myself in a very curated way, always striving for like these metrics and definitions of success that really had no meaning to me personally. And I was just trying to look good to like everyone else, right? And like trying to flex on LinkedIn, right? Like after doing so much of that, I've just decided that within my business and my brand, like at least in this container, right? Let me just give myself permission to just operate out of my own rules, my own 
rules, not the expectations or rules created by other people, right? And really just operate out of my own reasons and make decisions from there. And for my business, I really value like being genuinely and honestly myself over trying to look or sound like what I think a successful entrepreneur is supposed to look or sound like, right? And that's important to me and how I want to build this business and brand. And that is also why like my conviction in my business is honestly stronger than ever, right? Like I think for some people, like they kind of get bored of what they do and they pivot to something else. And for others, like their purpose and their work just gets even stronger. And for myself, I have seen myself fall into the latter camp, right? And I cannot be any more grateful for the work that I do as a coach, entrepreneur, and content creator. And this is a career that I'm so immensely grateful for. And I'm extremely proud to call myself a coach and a podcaster. So I do just want to take a moment to say thank you to those of you who are listening to this right now, because our work would not be where it is today without your support. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. All right, everybody. So as we start to wrap up for today, the last thing I want to say is that I find that for people who want to become entrepreneurs, they really do things differently. And they really do think differently from those who never have the urge to start like a business, right? And it's not that one is better than the other, but there is a difference between how they view the world and how they operate in the work that they do. So that's why one thing that I think we all have to work on is like really untangling those behavioral and cognitive patterns from our non-entrepreneur days or those settings that we were in previously and being able to discern where those patterns may be helpful for the business and where it may not be helpful for the business, right? And like be very careful not to let them hinder our progress and our action taking or the way we show up in the business, right? And to really wrap this up, I just want to say that I really mean it when I say, I think we all have something that can help other people. And therefore we are all able to create long-term businesses out of it. But when we operate our business out of the belief that we're not good enough, and hence we have to work even harder to compensate or just be recognized for the work that we do, like that is not sustainable, for your long-term lifespan as an entrepreneur. But instead, i rather all of us get really clear on why we do what we do so that we can continually ground back into our work whenever things get hard, right? And I really want all of us to lean into our unique thought leadership and build a brand and business around who we are and what we uniquely bring to the niche or industry and what we really want to be known for rather than what we think we're supposed to be known for because F that, right? Okay, so that is all for today. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode and I'll see you in the next one. Sounds good? Awesome. Let's get to work.